December 29th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Proverbs chapter 29 from the Old Testament. The one who stiffens his neck after numerous rebukes will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. When the righteous become numerous, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people groan. The man who loves wisdom brings joy to his father, but whoever associates with prostitutes wastes his wealth. A king brings stability to a land by justice, but one who exacts tribute tears it down. The one who flatters his neighbor spreads a net for his steps. In the transgression of an evil person there is a snare, but a righteous person can sing and rejoice. The righteous person cares for the legal rights of the poor. The wicked does not understand such knowledge. Scornful people inflame a city, but those who are wise turn away wrath. If a wise person goes to court with a foolish person, there is no peace whether he is angry or laughs. Bloodthirsty people hate someone with integrity. As for the upright, they seek his life. A fool lets fly with all his temper, but a wise person keeps it back. If a ruler listens to lies, all his ministers will be wicked. The poor person and the oppressor have this in common. The Lord gives light to the eyes of them both. If a king judges the poor in truth, his throne will be established forever. A rod and reproof impart wisdom, but a child who is unrestrained brings shame to his mother. When the wicked increase, transgression increases, but the righteous will see their downfall. Discipline your child and he will give you rest. He will bring you happiness. When there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. But the one who keeps the law, blessed is he. A servant cannot be corrected by words, for although he understands, there is no answer. Do you see someone who is hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. If someone pampers his servants from youth, he will be a weakling in the end. An angry person stirs up dissension, and a wrathful person is abounding in transgression. A person's pride will bring him low, but one who has a lowly spirit will gain honor. Whoever shares with a thief is his own enemy. He hears the oath to testify, but does not talk. The fear of people becomes a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord will be set on high. Many people seek the face of a ruler, but it is from the Lord that one receives justice. An unjust person is an abomination to the righteous, and the one who lives an upright life is an abomination to the wicked. God, one of my favorite preachers, Charles Spurgeon, said, If Christ is not all to you, he is nothing to you. He will never go into partnership as a part savior of men. If he be something, he must be everything. And if he be not everything, he is nothing to you. Today in Proverbs, uh, we, we read about a lot of things that we've already been talking about. About speaking truth into people's lives, even if it might hurt them that you're doing it out of love. And uh, applying that also to your children. But one of these verses is, is one of my favorites. The fear of people becomes a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord will be set on high. For most of my life, for a good 30 some odd years, I, I feared people. A and fear, a lot of people take that in the wrong meaning. I feared what they would think. I wanted people to like me. I wanted people to appreciate me. I wanted people um, to want me. Um, that all came from a level of fear of insecurity. Uh, there wasn't a fear of you in there. There was an acknowledgement of you. There was a knowing of you it, that I believe there was a God, but for Pete's sake, Satan and his demons believe, <laughs> believe there's a God. So it's not like I was winning bonus points there. Um, but I feared people. Um, I wanted things from them. I wanted compassion from them. I wanted love from them. I wanted encouragement from them. I wanted acceptance from them. I wanted accolades from them. And it all stemmed from this fear I had for them. 
But until you became my everything, my priorities were out of balance. Because I had that fear for people, just like Charles Spurgeon said, there was no fear for you. Uh, and you're not a partial God, you're an all in God. <laughs> so until I completely got my priorities straight and the only fear I have is you, I didn't truly have a relationship with you. And because of it, I fell into a lot of snares, <laughs> as Proverbs talks about, uh, snares with guys I dated. Boy, there were a lot of snares when I sought my acceptance, my love, my comfort, my identity in the guy that I was dating. Um, the snares of school. Uh, I was a very good student and I instantly learned that I could work that system <laughs> very well and I could receive accolades from teachers and my parents would be happy with me instead of angry with me and I would fear I would want these things from the human beings in my life. Uh, ultimately it became a snare because I didn't know how to get out of that cycle as I grew into an adult. I constantly was looking for acceptance from people and there gets a point where you can't do any more <laughs> and so you work yourself to death trying to please people and people are never completely pleased and so you're in this vicious cycle again the snare that Proverbs talks about it says but whoever trusts in the Lord will be set on high and ever since you helped me establish my priorities correctly and and you became first and foremost in my life uh, and even though I obviously sometimes still get that messed up uh, when I get it right my life is peaceful I do, did not say that my life goes smoothly <laughs> because that would be a misconception about Christianity. Um, my life is still just as bumpy as before, but that kind of set on high uh, makes me think I'm kind of above all the drama, the frustration, the anxiety, the agitation, the fearfulness of what other people think. Uh, and you've kind of set me apart from that. You set me above that. and. God, I just encourage everyone who's listening to this video today to take a look at their own lives. Is there anything in their life that is above you, God? Is work more important than you? Is their husband or wife or their kids more important than you? Is their car and house more important than you? If anything takes precedent over you, it is an idol. Very d simple definition of an idol. If it's more important than you, God, it is an idol, plain and simple. So if any of those sit on the throne of my heart for any amount of time above you, then I have this backwards. And God, I just pray that you continue to help me see those things. You help the people who are listening to this video see those things uh, and allow us to put our priorities back in the right order. Spurgeon, uh, went on in another sermon to talk about this. He says, men will allow God to be everywhere, but on his throne. They will allow him to be in his workshop to fashion worlds and make stars. They will allow him to be in his almary to dispense his alms and bestow his bounties. They will allow him to sustain the earth and bear up the pillars thereof or light the lamps of heaven or rule the waves of the ever moving ocean. But when God ascends his throne, his creatures then gnash their teeth and we proclaim and enthrone God and his right to do as he wills with his own, to dispose of his creatures as he thinks well, without consulting them in the matter, then it is that we are hissed and execrated, and then it is that men turn a deaf ear to us. For God on his throne is not the God they love, but it is God upon the throne that we love to preach. It is God upon his throne whom we trust. God, I, I pray for everyone that you come and sit on the throne of our hearts, removing everything else in our life, including our own self, that we lay our lives down at your feet and humble ourselves before you and that you do with our life what you need to have happen. You created us for your glory. Allow our lives to then glorify you. Allow our lives to play out for your kingdom what you need us to be 
in those instances with other people, with our children, at work, whatever that looks like. But God, I want my fear to be in your hands, not for other people. I want my priorities right. And I definitely want you on the throne of my heart. God, I pray all this in your son's name. Amen.